नमस्ते जय हिंद आई एम इन मुंबई इट्स इलेक्शन सीजन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड ऑफन टाइम्स वी आर आस्ड व्हेन आर यू गोइंग टू स्पीक टू यंगस्टर्स हु इज गोइंग टू टॉक टू अस एंड व्हेन वी वर आउट विद द सिटीजंस मैनिफेस्टो एंड वी वर डूइंग आवर ओन कवरेज लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स यंगस्टर्स सेड हु इज टॉकिंग टू अस सो वेल वी गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी इट्स अ कॉलेज ब्रेक बट स्टिल अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग वी हैव हैड सम स्टूडेंट्स हु आर एफिलिएटेड विद द आईआईएमयूएन एट द एचएसएनसी यूनिवर्सिटी वी ऑल गैदर्ड A lot of them, almost all of them, are first-time voters studying different streams. Some just out of 12, some into their first year, second year, multiple disciplines. So the boys and girls, good morning. Thank you very, very much. So we're going to talk to you and understand your man ki baat. So, as first-time voters, so let's start from the corner and then we'll go around. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Aishwarya. I'm currently pursuing travel and tourism from Jaihind College. You think you're going to get up and go out to vote on the day that you'd got to vote? Yes. Why? Because it's important to shape the future of our country, and it's in our hands right now. So why why should we lose this opportunity? True. So you are not going to lose the opportunity to vote, but are netas using the opportunity to speak to you as a youngster, as a youth, through this whole campaigning, through this whole prachar? Do you think, arey ha, ye mere se baat kar raha hai? You know, mere matlab ki baat kar raha hai ya kar rahi hai? Have you ever thought that? I have not noticed it yet. Not noticed it yet. So what is it that you would like netas to speak to you about? about like to basically tell us that we youth are also important in the country and we are basically the main audience like mm. they kind of tell us that way mm. and not the senior citizens or like the middle aged people mm. so you you want the youth to be given more bhav yeah. more importance yeah. right but how do they get this bhav what do you mean hi what's your name hi my name is murthy and i'm currently um, a volunteer at iim u1 mm. um to answer your question what we can do is um to involve youth more into voting we can um, you know collaborate with various uh, organizations also you know um, make sure that you know on social media as where you can because there is where the gen z is you know more active um, it also says that you know 76% of um, the gen z people are um, active on instagram mm. so you know going on social media and you know just uh, letting them know that voting is important and you know giving the importance to the youth is very important true very well said murthy that you should be where the youth are but uh, one is i'll come out and tell you listen you're youngster you're first time voter you must vote second is i must make you want to vote so what are the issues that will make you want to vote hi what's your name hi uh, i am divya and i recently completed my 12th board examinations um so uh, the issues which the youth currently faces is the main issue is the unemployment uh, mm. in the country wherein uh, the people who have who are above 18 uh, and below 24 they do not get the right uh, opportunities to do their uh, internship or build their work profile so the government should ensure that uh, more and more uh, opportunities are created for the youth of the nation especially the people between the age bracket of 18 to 24 mm. so that uh, they uh, get something uh, uh, to go and uh, mm. uh, build their uh, profile correct so you're saying that when you graduate when you come out the biggest insecurity is who's going to employ me uh, am i going to be employable right but interesting thing that you said is that the government has to create opportunities where you will get employment so the government is not job is not to give you jobs but to create avenues where you will get jobs or jobs are created for you but what kind of jobs and is there clarity there and today are the avenues far greater than the traditional doctor engineer mba hi i am garima wadwani and i am a volunteer at iimun so uh, what kind of job basically jobs in tech because nowadays tech pays a lot so if the government uh, increases you know jobs in tech and something like that then uh, there may be a lot of job job opportunities in uh, geological section because you know nowadays uh, previously when people used to think about uh, educating their children there were like two three options engineering medical but now they have a lot of options like they previously also had but now they are more aware so there's entrepreneurship there is uh, again geological mm -hmm. sector Uh, this travel and tourism we're standing at a university that is teaching real estate they're treating travel and tourism right so there uh, it, the whole scope is changed. yeah there's right. hospitality there are a lot of other fields so i guess government and parents as well they should educate their children that yeah there are a, a lot of possibilities and just medical sector or just engineering won't give you as much money as an entrepreneur would earn that entrepreneur with an i was going to come to that aspect that everybody is thinking who will give us jobs but are you as a youngster thinking who can i give jobs to 
why can't I become an entrepreneur or take a risk? I, is that thought coming to, you, to your head? What's your name? Uh, my name is Rohan. I am currently pursuing management from Hinduja College uh, in my first year. So my thought is that uh, like uh, as an entrepreneur, I would like to increase more jobs in manufacturing sector. Okay. Uh, because like that. But but you want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and that's the reason I'm pursuing management yeah. as well. So it will help me out and. How to manage your own company, your own firm? Yeah. That's the thought process. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. And uh, along with the manufacturing sector, there are various sectors in which jobs can be increased. But to currently decrease the unemployment, which is currently going on in India. Uh, the best sector will be manufacturing. Uh, mm. all so along. You, th you think you need manufacturing sector, but for that manufacturing aspect, you need skill. So if you're getting into manufacturing, you need skill. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Perseus from BBA. Okay. First year. So is again education, unemployment, are these the relation aspects or are there other things which you would like politicians of today to talk to you about? To so most of these are quite important for the country's development in uh, today's day and age. Uh, when it comes to uh, pol politics, uh, politicians should also look at the middle class. Recently, they've been uh, looking at only the poor class and uh, the uh, rich class. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them get benefits and uh, some people get uh, other kind of benefits, whereas uh, in today's day and age, the middle class is getting left out big time. So I would like politicians to like do something for even the middle class people like us. So mm -hmm. that's... Okay, when you say do something for middle class people like us, you've just like hit a chord with me. But I'm asking you what should be done. So there is a bracket which is have nots, that's the, that's the poor. Then there is the haves or the rich or the super rich. Then there is in between that who have something but want more. That's the middle class. So what should be done? So the rich have a very nice equation where they don't pay much tax compared to like even middle class people. Some of the middle class people are paying more tax than uh, like rich people but because... As a, as a percentage of income you're saying or, or uh, the portion of income you're The saying? portion of income because a lot of the rich people who own like businesses, they don't show like drawings. They just show it as business expenses. So they are never personally taxed. Whereas a middle, middle class man like you or me, we are salaried people. So we have to declare the income yeah. and uh, pay tax for it. So I'm just saying like there should be some kind of tax benefits for us also. Correct. So if you're personal income you should not be allowed to draw it via your business and reduce your personal income because that incidence and that li li uh, this one is not there leeway is not there with a salaried person that's why they think become an entrepreneurs but then if you can block that loophole are, are less people going to become entrepreneurs that's a question Perseus tell me so hi what's your name my name is Devansh I'm hmm. pursuing BBA from NHSMRE so looking at his thoughts, I agree with him completely. Like there is a very raise high in inflation and everything that is happening. The middle class is just getting squeezed from both the sides. They are only looking at the poor and the rich. That is completely what he's saying. So like recently they spoke about the inheritance tax and mm -hmm. when Adani and Ambani, everyone said that they'll shift to Dubai. That's when they stopped talking about that recent inheritance tax and they were like, okay, we won't put it in India and like mm -hmm. other countries have the inheritance mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. Is it? But uh, when was this conversation? It was like the news was up 12 hours ago. Uh, but the Adanis and Ambanis didn't say we'll shift our business. Yeah, to the, but the government's the policy has never been wealth distribution or wealth uh, redistribution tax or there was a tax which was there in the 70s. It was abolished. Now some so parties have said that we will try and not bring, bring. So they are planning to get back again and which is not a good so, thing. So, so you don't think that uh, you got more money than I do. So you, I should take some money from you and distribute it to people like us. Is that a good thought funda or is it a wrong funda? That is wrong because it's their money now, so why should we like, you know, spread the money to give it to each other? Correct. The inheritance but, but tax. But those who feel, I'm just asking, there are those who feel, are working hard, right? They are not working hard. They need to work hard to get the money like them. Ah, so this working hard aspect. Youth of today, are they ready to work hard? Or they want that I will work hard and get more money? Hi, my name is Krishan. I'm from, I'm a BBA student. I'm from Niranjani. Hi, my name is Krishan. I'm from BBA student. I'm from Niranjani. I'm from BBA student. 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 I'm from the youth and even all the people of the country should work hard because I think the per capita income of India is very low if mm. we see it's at 2.4 lakhs and we need to go ahead if we want to be become a developed country the Vixit Bharat the vision so we need to increase the per capita income and for that I feel we really need to work. so when an NR Narayan Murthy says that the gray growth phase that we as a country are in Bharat is in we need to actually work 11 hours not 8 hours we need to work at least 11 hours per day are you in for that? Are you ready to do that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm all in. You're all in. But yeah. there are others, uh, Corbena, we won't do it. 
नहीं करेंगे आई थिंक वी नीड टू क्रिएट दैट माइंड सेट फॉर ग्रोथ आई फील एज इंडियंस वी हैव दैट माइंड सेट फॉर ग्रोथ एंड वर्क हार्ड एटीट्यूड बट एट द सेम टाइम वी रियली नीड टू इनकलकेट द स्मार्ट वर्क एटीट्यूड जस्ट लाइक अमेरिकन एंड चाइना डेड सो आई थिंक क्रिएट इन दैट माइंड सेट वी नीड अ ग्रेट लीडर हु हैज दोज क्वालिटी सो दैट द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दैट नेशन लोन फ्रॉम दैट लीडर सो यू गोट टू हार्ड वर्क एंड स्मार्ट वर्क द चाइनीज हैव स्वेट शॉप्स वी कैन डू दैट इन आर कंट्री सो वी गोट हैव वॉलेंटरली पीपल रेडी टू वर्क द अमेरिकन ओनली बाई लेबर वी कैन अफोर्ड टू डू दैट आई दर सो वी गोट फिगर आउट आर ओन मॉडल राइट डू वी हैव आर ओन मॉडल इज देर अ पॉसिबिलिटी हाई आई एम हेतिक आई स्टडी बी बी एन सुमारी टू आंसर अ क्वेश्चन आई थिंक वी हैव अ मॉडल इन प्लेस बट स्टिल इन द प्रोसेस आई थिंक इट्स इट्स अ फ्यू इयर्स डाउन द लाइन वेर वी हैव समथिंग दैट वी कैन से दैट दिस इज फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड वी बेसिकली की बिल्ड इट एंड नॉट रिली टेकन फ्रॉम अदर कंट्री सो इंडिया एज as an ad, it is an identity in itself so i'm just saying are indians lazy or are indians ready to work hard to answer a question indians are ready to work hard but there are some lazy people that there are some lazy but largely are we those that if you are inspired enough if you are committed enough if we are excited enough we ready to put in hard work hard labor yeah, you yeah. think we are such people? yeah we are such people that are ready to put in hard so, work so, so we are not people who would say listen i'm you sit at home 3 days a week i'll give you 300 rupees per day or 500 rupees per day you don't do any work you just chill is does that model work for you or does it say does the model work saying you come out and work and i'll pay you your wages you come out and put in your heart sweat and toil and i'll reward you for that which works so the latter one works where you come and earn your wages hmm. is not the other way around where i'll sit at home and you pay me 300 rupees so, so so doles that no matter what i'll guarantee you income for four days a week even if you work or you don't work money will reach you does that model work or i'll guarantee you income if you step out and work hi what's your name hi my name is ummahani i'm currently pursuing bba from nhsmre so as per the topic you were just covering up i think the main reason is india really needs to adapt remote working because people really want to start moonlighting which is basically doing two jobs and for that it's very difficult if you have to be there at the job constantly mm. i think remote working something that americans have adapted beautifully should also be taken into consideration by indians and as for the political point of view i think the party is doing a lot of good by starting the vikas bharat 2047 by adapting a sustainable development by the year 2047 but there are a lot of other things where they can be more inclusive about hmm. when it comes to youngsters by asking them what their wants and needs are as per all the topics covered hmm. since we are the future you are the future okay now let me just open this up uh, are you in favor of what uh, nr narayan murthy says that we as a nation are in a growth phase so we got to work harder when you're growing you got to work harder Do you agree with that? Because a lot of people said, "Ha! Ah, how can you ask me to work 11 hours a day? Already I'm working eight hours. Why should I work 11 hours?" So where do you stand there? Are you willing to work if it actually gives you? And and if an entrepreneur says, "You work 11 hours, I'll pay you for 11 hours," are you willing to work? As per the concept, I think just because the country is growing does not mean you have to devote 11 hours. There's something called a smart working, but there are a lot of ways to achieve it. Mm. More than giving in 11 hours, you can find in ways for the company to grow better and get more profit. Great, more profit. But when you when somebody talked about manufacturing, in manufacturing you have a processing in place. You can only put so many things and churn out so much of product in one hour. So that means if I work only eight hours, I'll churn out so much if i work 3 hours extra i'm also going to produce a little more so you think this sector balancing is possible ha huh? anybody thought starts there yeah i feel we should adopt automation and robotics and even ai for that matter like we can actually implement the technologies to pehle okay. now you're saying adapt robotics the other said they're saying there are no jobs give us more jobs employ more labor so this labor versus automation fight is there so as a youngster what do you think how can we strike a balance as a uh, like, but as a nation we need to actually mark our presence in the global scenario so i feel we should adopt technology but at the same time we should make sure the youngsters are getting jobs so we really need to figure like the balance yeah. right isn't it so it's so on this topic recently uh, Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani had given us a guest lecture, and I asked him the same question: What do you think of AI? Mm -hmm. And he gave a very smart answer, which I liked a lot. He said, uh, "AI is just a tool. It's like a mobile phone or like a specs for a person. The more you use it, the better you use it, the better p the people can get in their jobs." Mm -hmm. And coming back to your Narayan Murthy's quote, I think the harder the person works for a business, the more the business grows. If you put uh, hard work where it's needed. 
and at the right place at the right time, not extra, like if you're just putting in extra hours for no sake and there's no growth. It's not mindless effort. Yeah, if you put in the proper effort and the calculated efforts on, and risks, then uh, it's pretty pretty safe, uh, straightforward to uh, pay extra per hour. Straightforward and pay extra. So you're saying combine a little bit of smart work and hard work where necessary and put in the efforts. Now let me ask you something, and anybody can go for it. The Prime Minister engaged with creators, he was having a chat with gamers, so at 73 he's trying to speak to what works for you guys. But if you want the Prime Minister to speak more to people like you, what would you like him to do? So it is not necessarily Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the nation's Prime Minister, let's take off from the template of what PM Modi is doing, what would you like the Prime Minister of the country to do to appeal to you, the youth? So you can just put your hand up and I'll come to whoever wants to have a go at it. Yes, ma'am. So I think something that he recently did, like Startup India in 2017, that was a great initiative for youngsters who have great ideas and to gather them. Some more initiatives similar to that would do so youngsters a lot of great. Mm. Lot of, so more, more things around startup. You, you think uh, something to create the appetite for risk uh, in your minds? Because all of us are apprehensive, isn't it? Yaar, kuch studies safe mil jaye, life mein risk kyun lenega, tension kyun lenega. But somewhere others who become entrepreneurs say risk nahi to kuch nahi. Right? So you think something like that? Or what else do you think? I think he's doing enough at this point in time. Hmm. As we move forward, maybe we can take more initiative. What? Like what? Uh, Let's say if he's watching this broadcast, what would you tell him? Modi ji, ab aapko ye karna chahiye. Ya jo bhi ab desh ka prime minister banega, aapko ye karna chahiye. I think interact more with them. Hmm. So we, we as youth also have opinions and ideas. So that's what I'm asking. What's your opinion? What do you want him to do? Uh, let's say, let me give you 30 seconds to think about three things you would like Prime Minister Modi, if he gets elected again, to address in the first 100 days, which is directly concerning youngsters, which will tell you, ah, bhai, ye sahi hai. or whoever becomes the Prime Minister that you must do this? In my opinion, I think the youth of this country needs decision-making power, as well as at the same time, we need unity. India's land of like 1.8 billion, and we have billion problems in India. And I think youth has a solution for it because we really have that appetite and mind for problem solving. So for that, we need to gather the youth. So it's just the idea, why, not, why don't we create a Yuva Sabha, like an assembly of all the young Indians, and actually unite them and get their ideas and implement those ideas because we don't have a voice. So we need, really need to unite first and then take the action. So it's like a Yuva think tank exactly. or like a Yuva Sabha from across the country, across various sectors, and then try and get their ideas and let them pull out ideas and way forwards and continuously saying something. Uh, one of the suggestions that was made was student body elections across colleges, which started, but in a more uh, peaceful manner, democratic manner, so that ideas, talking about future, policy making gets into the system. Yeah. Now you said you looked at PM Modi, so like he's trying to just being a dictator now, like he's just doing whatever he feels is right for the country. He's not asking the other opinions and everything. Like mm. he'll go talk to the poor, he'll go talk to the rich, but in the middle, if he's not thinking, he's not coming and talk to the middle class, which is the main. But they are the main service working people, hard work, working hard to get the pro India progress and everything. Mm. So he should be starting talking to people in like the middle class. He should talk to be like all the types, rich, poor, okay. and middle. So he just look being a dictator and trying to, to just focus on the rich and the poor. Class. Okay. So he's speaking to the rich and the poor, but with the middle class, he's as good as a dictator because the middle class is the one that quietly is paying all the taxes. Yeah, it's right, and they are they are the ones getting squeezed from both sides. These are the middle class champions right in the middle of this discussion. Yeah. Uh, so my suggestion is to, uh, so Modi ji is actually doing a lot of uh, work to get foreign companies mm -hmm. to invest uh, into India. But uh, my thought is uh, you're giving all benefits, tax benefits, land benefits, different kind of benefits for all these foreign companies to invest. But uh, maybe you should also give some Indian startups, which he is giving a lot of also mm -hmm. leeway to it, a lot of startups. But maybe some Indian companies that are also aspiring, which are like out of the startup phase but they're like in the middle struggling maybe he should like look into that kind of a sector where uh, like they've okay. struggled so there are production link incentives which are there or PLIs which are there which schemes are there in various sectors but do you think that can be expanded and you're saying okay you help them start up now they are at mid from mid to large if they need to grow give them some push there and incentive there is that what you uh, think uh, not really but I'm just saying like 
see they've helped a lot of foreign companies settle in India like Apple has now come and now we've started making iPhones in India which is a great achievement but now if you could have a local brand instead of say an Apple maybe if you had a local brand making it and endorsing it to Apple I think that would have been a better uh, way so as a supplier yeah like a supplier hmm. exactly like, like a supplier who would have been supplying parts components and also uh, things to to Apple oh, yeah. Yeah, so if Apple is sourcing it here somebody is making those parts right so, correct so yeah. But there can be more that can be done. Yeah. Uh, so my thoughts are that instead of creating another Sabha for youth, uh, why not we encourage youth to join the parliament, the Lok Sabha, and include youth uh, in the Lok Sabha itself, so that the points can be given on the floor itself. Uh, because if we create another parliament, the voices will not be raised as equal as if they will speak in front of the speaker, the president, and all. Along with uh, that, uh, uh, as you mentioned about critical thinking and gaining knowledge from the start, the PM Narendra Modi has also launched new education policy, uh, which changed the education system as well because uh, inclu including critical thinking, problem solving at an early age will help them decide their future as well. And uh, right. But that NEP needs to be implemented across the board, isn't it? And the Yuva Sabha is not a formal structure. The Yuva Sabha is an informal structure, like a think tank. So think tank doesn't become parliament. The think tank becomes advisory. But youth, 20 to 29 years old, less than 30 years old, out of 543, if that is going to grow to about, say, 600 or 700 very soon, post delimitation, etc., can we not have 20 or 30 youngsters between 20 and 30? But for that, you have to fight for the Rajya Sabha. 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 Yeah, that's the thing. Like, so, what do you want to be an entrepreneur or a leader? Like, not, all, not, not, all, but not all, but those who want to do and those who want to bring the real change in India. And uh, by raising the voice only, we can bring a change. Correct. And not like including the whole in youth in the parliament, but at least some voices in the parliament. Okay, so who is youth for you? What age group is youth for you? Uh, somebody who's 50 years old is youth for you? Somebody who's 40 years old is youth for you? Or somebody who's between 20 and 35 is youth for you? Uh, so between the age of 18 to 25 or 30. 18 to 30, that is youth, okay. Yeah, so what I feel is, yes, 18 to 35, if you uh, create that age group and then mentored by those who are experienced, that would, I, uh, I guess, create more impact. Mm -hmm. Coming back to your previous question, uh, what would we like? So the government should do whatever interests youth. And because, you know, nowadays youth is more aware and do like wants to do more for the nation. So there are some issues like, you know, uh, sustainability issues, uh, environmental like you know some issues like this so if the government fo you know focuses on these issues and directly converses with the youth on these i guess the impact would be created and then empowering youth to uh, speak to youth empowering youth to speak to you to communicate better okay so uh, according to me uh, as uh, he mentioned that the new ed national education policy which was implemented pm modi has uh, uh, spread the voice that more vocational subjects should be included like critical thinking risk appetite and much more so that should be inculcated amongst the youth especially uh, where uh, the traditional rote learning pattern was going on. So shifting a focus towards uh, more uh, vocational subjects should be given. Additionally, uh, PM Modi has uh, started various uh, like mm -hmm. incentives for the entrepreneurs and everyone, be it Make in, uh, Make in India or Startup India, Stand Up India, wherein he has encouraged the women entrepreneurs also to uh, step up and empowering the women to uh, come mm -hmm. along. So that's an issue which uh, needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. 2029, uh, you can add on to what you want to say. In 2029 elections, you want to see 33% women representation across all parties? Yes. Yes. Huh? yes. Walk the talk, right? All Netas should walk the talk. This time they haven't, but they've only brought the reservation. They would groom Netas. Definitely. Yeah, so you also have to be interested then. Definitely. Okay. Good. Okay, tell me how. Uh, so basically, um, as he said that, you know, in entrepreneurs as well, um, in my opinion, I should say that uh, for youth, um, the main issue that we, uh, you know, face here is unemployment. Um, as a youth, I would say that, you know, uh, PM Narendra Modi has already um, created many job facilities, which is great. Um, and I think that he should, you know, uh, continue doing this so that, you know, more and more youth, um, as and when they get jobs, it can, you know, create more development in the nation. Right. So creation of jobs, because this whole thing about who's going to employ me, I am employable, but is there a job for me? It seems to be a concern across the board. 
but you've got to create an environment where more people can. Yes, quickly. Yeah, so according to me, the government, like as Rohan mentioned, that there should be a youth repre representation in the Lok Sabha. So for that, the youth needs to be empowered to join the politics. So basically, most according to me, most of the people in the generation, in our generation, are not at all interested in politics, uh, to be honest. So you've got to get them interested into politics. Yeah. So you so think at college level, student level, there should be some level of... Uh, Political engagement also, elections hona chahiye, muddo pe baat honi chahiye, all of that. Yeah, like they can do that, like they can obviously bring sort of debate sessions in colleges or maybe in 11, 12 standards. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can also host seminars like nearing election time, the students of like grade 12th and grade 11th can be made aware about how to right. vote and how, what is the importance of voting. Mm -hmm. Because throughout our, like according to me in our education, I like, Basically, I had no idea how to vote, how to register for the voter ID. So after turning 18, I had, I had to research about it for myself. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the government can uh, host seminars and all, all across India and across colleges and schools, uh, it will be really helpful. So you, you mean you let's have policy debates, let's have politic debate, political debates with points of view from youngsters rather than political parties. The other aspect is also have a certain semblance of elections and student body, so where conversations will happen, elections will happen, but in a far more democratic and a saner manner than it was because of which it was stopped in Maharashtra. Across. Final question to all of you before we wind this up. Would you want to get jobs, seats, places based on your merit, that means your score, and your socioeconomic background, that means you have the haves and the have nots. So the cutoff is the same. But if somebody who comes from a, say, poor household, should that person get your seat or gets a seat ahead of you because you're, even if your cutoffs are the same, is that okay? Or if a person gets lesser scores but has a different surname and because of that, that person gets the... Where do you stand on this entire reservation aspect? I'm, I'm just quickly asking you, would you want merit and this purely socio-economic condition, have and have not, to work? that okay if they if the person comes from an income household which is less than say 5 lakh rupees or 7 lakh rupees per annum then that person needs a push up so that quota is created where do you people stand on this quickly two three people yes yes ma'am i think we've all faced this during our admissions and it was a very difficult procedure since certain colleges only used to take sindhi quota so there was always somebody from the background from a Hmm. for the background that used to get first preference and I think it was very unfair to the ones because it's not anybody's particular fault where they are born in and what their family background is. So I think everybody should have an equal vote. Equal vote. And should it be merit purely on merit? Should definitely be complete. Merit. And if there is somebody, I'm just asking you, like you are from a family or I'm, let's take me, I'm from a family which is well to do. I scored 95%. You are from a family which is not very well to do. We have come from a humble background. You also score 95%. The college says, I'll give you a chance over you. So I'm okay with that. But if the college says, no, your surname is not okay, her surname is okay, and she's got a quota, so that's why she'll get in. Are you okay with that? So what are you okay with it? The admission should be on merit basis only. Now speaking about that part, you know, some people are economically, like some classes are economically back backward and they don't have enough money. I guess government should invest more like, if a kid is preparing for an entrance exam and you're directly giving him college, uh, regardless of scores, you can uh, put financial investment in his coaching so that he studies well and put investment there so that, you know, he gets all the okay. benefits of first Early. So rather than doing it at the enter, at the score, at the marks level, do it at the preparation level. Yeah, so can you help somebody from a socio-economically weaker background be in the education itself, the process of education itself rather than at the time of yeah. getting the marks? So That's that, what it is. That is what the real test is. They will study and then they will give exam, then it's okay. okay. Whatever. So you create an environment where they get good quality coaching, good quality learning, teaching, and then it's the merit of the student. And based on that, it should be merit is what you're saying. Yeah, quick word, final word, yeah. Yeah, okay. so um, I think that the base should be uh, built well first. Um, so I think that, yeah, uh, sometimes, you know, there are some, um, you know, things where, uh, where the surname matters that, you know, okay, just because your surname or, um, you know, you have low percentage, but then to if the surname, then you get a free pass. I think it should be uh, entirely on merit basis um, because everyone has to work hard enough and smart enough to, um, you know, go there and, um, you know, mm. perform. So if I say that if the base is, you know, formed properly, then <coughs> we can go forward. Then we can go forward. So final word, what do you guys think? The middle class in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> 
that so every, everyone should be treated equally like there should be any like uh, thing no like but you you agree that help in the process of learning help those who cannot afford education to learn but don't decide when the marks come when the marks come give it on merit see one thing is that something is going not going to change is like bribery and mm. uh, like maybe reservation of seats for like a certain community or something that doesn't change but we should be thankful and uh, like for us at least wherever we get we should take the opportunity i genuinely sometimes feel bad for people who are like uh, don't get the opportunity and don't get the chance to come to good colleges but uh, living in mumbai there are so many good colleges so maybe sometimes people should not uh, you know get worried about if you don't get it here take it there correct like there are options open correct so there are one is you have to create more options you got to have far more number of colleges and institutions so you can the other is that if you he and me score the same marks on what basis should a seat be allotted should it be on the basis of your surname or should it be on the basis of where you're all right to say okay somebody is a poorer background less uh, able background weaker section so that person got ahead of me so it's all right because they honestly on this topic i'd say first come first serve so if we've all got say a 90% and we all all have applied say uh, he's applied first you've applied second now i've applied third you should get it in that order like which are the form number is like you should have it that way ha jisne pehle apply kiya usko seat de do the reason why like other colleges take interview after even getting the same person they take a interview to see who's the better one so that's the filter system based on again that decides the quantitative aspect is the marks the qualitative aspect is the interpersonal communication and based on that you should allow a person the thing is that um, as in when he mentioned that um, you know none of the colleges matter when we go ahead um i feel that um, uh, it does matter because um i from my personal opinion if i say um if there are two people uh, one you know if they want job careers one is from jain and one is from hinduja i will say that you know some of the people will give more preference to jain as per hinduja mm -hmm. um because some times you know that college which Co college back you know, background which matters but i can see we have run out of time but there are so many examples where people have come from very very ordinary colleges not they don't have big name but they had merit and they had hard work they had, so at the end of the day merit and hard work always prosper sometimes there will be a stumbling block but largely it's your own individual effort but overall so are you all going to vote yes, yes. so let me show uh, the index finger left index finger to the cameras everyone together it's our campaign here at cnn news 18 say together go vote go vote thank you thank you very much great conversation thank you